be honest, Formula 1 can be somewhat boring in the first two days of the race weekend if there are no junior racing events like F2 or F3 in the schedule. Then the first two days flow with three uncompetitive practice sessions and one qualifying round. Teams are busy adjusting their cars to the main race on Sunday evening, and until then, fans have nothing to see on the circuit except the cars that are lapping freely around the circuit. So, the FIA wanted something to make the first two days more competitive, to expel its boring nature, and the idea of the sprint race format came forward as the best possible solution. For the first time, sprint races were held in 2021 during some selected Grand Prix weekends. The FIA continued it up to this season, and now we are in the third year of the sprint race format. But the sprint race format has a new face with the introduction of the revised regulation for the year 2023. We are going to discuss about the revised sprint format through this video. But before we proceed, hit the subscribe button and smash the bell icon for more exciting updates. Even though the sprint race format was introduced in 2021, the FIA is still running it as a test format in selected Grand Prix as they are closely watching the pros and cons of the format. After deciding the track positions for Sunday's main race based on the results of the sprint race, huge criticism came towards the FIA. When a certain driver has to retire from the sprint after an accident or a collision, then he has to start the race from the back of the grid. This is very disadvantageous to any team, as they don't get any second chance to recover if they failed in the sprint. This happened to Gasly at Amola in the very first season of sprinting. He qualified as sixth and had a good start in the sprint race, but he crashed to the barriers in the midway of the race and had to start the main race from the back of the grid. So, the FIA identified the negative points of the previous format over two seasons and introduced this revised format providing treatment to these negative points. Now, a dedicated qualifying session is held for the sprint race by the name of Sprint Shootout to select the grid for the sprint race. So the outcome of the sprint race has no effect to the main race as a separate qualifying session is held to decide the grid for the main race on Sunday. That means the usual sprint schedule has been changed allowing only one practice session for the whole weekend. This practice session is followed by the ordinary qualifying session on Friday evening. Then, the second practice session on Saturday morning has been replaced with the sprint shootout and it was followed by the sprint race in the evening. That means the whole Saturday is dedicated to the sprint race, isolating it from the main race event. Then, the main race is held on Sunday evening as usual. When comparing the nature of the two qualifying sessions, we can observe a considerable difference in timing and regulations. Regular qualifying is somewhat longer than the sprint shootout, and 18, 15 and 12 minutes are allocated for Q1, Q2 and Q3 respectively. But the shootout qualifying sessions is somewhat shorter than the regular qualifying sessions and allocated only 12, 10 and 8 minutes for the three rounds. However, this is disadvantageous for the drivers who try to set a lap time at the latter part of each round, as they always face the risk of losing their lap time under the red flag for exceeding the allocated time limit. In regular qualifying, the choice of the tyre compound is totally in the hands of the driver and team management, but in the shootout, it is mandatory to use medium compounds in the first two rounds and the soft one in the final qualifying round. In addition to qualifying sessions, the one and only practice session of the whole weekend is conducted somewhat differently to an ordinary practice session, as this is the only opportunity for all the teams to fine-tune their setup for the next two days. Each team is allowed 60 minutes on the track, so more time is allocated for this practice session on Friday morning. Even though bigger changes were introduced to the schedule, no considerable change can be observed in the sprint race. It is 100 kilometers as usual without any mandatory pit stops. In order to cover the 100 kilometers, 17 laps were used in Baku and it consumed around 30 minutes. 100 kilometers is the must and other factors are dependable on track conditions. Points are still offered for the sprint race standings in a way that causes little impact to the championship standings. The race winner is offered 8 points and the remaining 7 finishers get points in descending order. 
The normal point system is used for the main race, offering the chance for the drivers to secure a maximum of 33 points at the end of a sprint race weekend. Sergio Perez was able to collect all these 33 points by winning both races in Baku. This revised sprint format has good plus points compared to the previous one, reducing the impact of sprint on the main race. Now, there is an opportunity for drivers who failed in the sprint to perform well in the next race, minimizing the impact on championship standings. What do you think about the revised sprint race format? Is it good or bad to introduce for all the race weekends? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel to get more exciting Formula 1 news. See you in the next video, guys. Goodbye.